Hi, my name's Kevin. I'm an Ableton certified trainer and product specialist for Keith McMillan. I've been having a lot of fun playing with the Q Nexus. The addition of an MPE arpeggiator and sequencer brings a lot of creative freedom and possibilities. An Ableton Live 11 suite with its MPE editing features, instruments, and a lot more is there to take it to the next level. I'm hoping to show you some of that in this video. First, let's get set up. From with Ableton Live, we want to deal with our clock and also enabling MPE for the input. Because we have a three track arpeggio and sequencer, we also want to deal with sync or MIDI clock. And that will have QNexus send sync. If you'd like the QNexus to follow lives, transport and clock, you can send sync from the output tab right there. Now that we're set up, let's record enable this channel here and test out a quick recording. Let's record some chords here. I'll use tilt to sweep the filter frequency and we'll look at the data and see how we can smooth it, edit it and quantize it. A lot of new features came in 11, such as velocity range, randomization, and scale snapping. And I will mention that all your standard editing moves are applicable here to MPE data. Your standard CCs or MIDI control changes are accessible up here. Here in this third tab, we have our MPE editor, and this is where we can edit slide, pressure, and pitch data per note. You can use Alt 1, 2, and 3 to switch between these editors. It's really easy to grab a note and do something like scale its value. And also interesting, if you move the position of the note, the value moves along with it. You can also take the information from one note and copy it to another note. Those are just a few of the things we can do in the MPE editor. Let's look at some additional tools that we can use in real time to affect this. There's a few tools you must check out located in MIDI effects within Ableton Live's browser, particularly MPE control. And as you can see, MPE control can visually show us the data. Per note, but it also gives us a lot of control, such as setting the minimum and maximum values. You can reverse the values or setting up curves. My favorite feature here is in this pull down where you can smooth the information for slide and pressure independently. In the case of slide, setting a quick rise and a slower fall will help smooth the data on its way down. Or we can try the opposite of that. Expression control and other device in MIDI effects is also MPE compatible. And this device allows us to take our data such as pitch, tilt, or pressure and map it somewhere else that might not be on the same track or not even to the same instrument. Select slide or pressure and map it just as you would a standard MIDI mapping. In my instance, I'll map slide to send B, which has an echo. And I'll show you how to make some quick MPE assignments. In the case of Ableton Live, if you have Wavetable or Sampler, you have two MPE compatible instruments right there. When you're using external plugins such as VSTs or audio units and they're MPE enabled, you can enable them by right clicking and clicking right here. To assign an MPE parameter, you'll find MPE as a tab in the matrix modulation section of Wavetable. It's really easy to set something up because any value you click on will add itself. In this instance, I'll use tilt, otherwise known as slide, and we'll assign a bit to the filter frequency. And we'll find some other areas that might be interesting to modulate. What about the pulse width of our second oscillator?
And in this instance, you can see how holding a one note arpeggiator can be tons of fun. For our final track, I'll demonstrate how expressive and how playable the Q-Nexus is with a little patch I've been working on. 